it's time to do another booktube video for my booktube channel it's it's been at least 24 hours so today according to the clock my wife gave me this clock many years ago and I'm a, a timekeeper I always see myself in the flow of time uh, I was born I've gone through my teenage years, I went through my adolescence, my teenage years, I went through my 20s, my 30s, my 40s, and my 50s, and my 60s. I'm, I'm going down the river of time. And because I keep a diary, I'm always writing down in my diary the day, if I'm writing in the morning, or afternoon, or evening, or late at night. So I'm always keeping track of time. That's why in my book, two videos I'm kind of carrying on how I do it in my personal diary I write down the day the time so today it is September the 21st it's a Wednesday the year 2016 it is 757 at night it is 78 degrees here in the dining room here at night we're coming to the very end of summer and going into the autumn season here in West Michigan. Today in my diary, I ended on page 795. Pretty soon I will be writing in the month of October. So yeah, that's my diary tomorrow. I got all set up. So tomorrow is a Thursday, it's September the 22nd, 2016. So that's my diary. That's, as I said in my last video, I'm focusing on just one book in the afternoons, uh, as I have said uh, in, the, in the mornings, when I have my time of worship in devotions I read the the Holy Bible right now I'm going to the epistle of Hebrews which is in the New Testament uh, which is towards the end of the New Testament epistle of, it says here the epistle of Paul the Apostle to the Hebrews well, the King James translators in the 17th century believed, or at least some believed, that the Apostle Paul wrote the Epistle to the Hebrews. Now today in modern New Testament scholarship, there is a lot of debate on who wrote the Epistle of the Hebrews. So we would just say that we don't know who the writer actually was. If it was the Apostle Paul or someone else. So I've been reading the Bible in the morning, going through the Epistle of Hebrews, uh, still reading God Has Spoken in His Son, a Biblical Theology of the Epistle of Hebrews by Peter T. O'Brien. I'm reading Peter T. O'Brien's commentary on the Epistle of Hebrews called The Letter to the Hebrews, the Pillar New Testament Commentary. Uh, and I'm still reading uh, the rest, the race set before us, a biblical theology of perseverance and assurance by Thomas R. Snyder and R. Dell B. Kennedy. Still reading that. I got a, a new book in the mail, a Christian book. This afternoon, I ordered. I pre-ordered this from Amazon a while back. It's called Hermeneutics as Apprenticeship. How the Bible Shapes Our Interpretive Habits and Practices by David I. Starling. It's interesting, the foreword in this book is written by Peter T. O'Brien because Peter T. O'Brien teaches in Australia and so does the writer of this new book, Peter I. Starling. He is from Australia also. So I got this in the mail this afternoon uh, I'm a student of hermeneutics, 
the history of hermeneutics, the science of hermeneutics, which is how we go about interpreting the Bible. So I got that in the mail. Uh, as I said, in the afternoons, I've been reading, in the, in the evening hours, I'm reading Serena by Ron Rash, a novel by him. And I also got in the mail today a used novel by Ron Nash. I plan to get all of Ron Rash's novels. I really have uh, enjoyed reading his Serena. This one I got in the mail today is his novel titled The World Made Straight. It says here in the back cover about this novel by Ron Rash. Travis Shelton is 17. The summer he wanders into the wooded near, woods near his home. Discovers a grove of marijuana large enough to make him some serious money and steps into the jaws of a bear trap. After hours on the floor's forest floor, he's released from the trap by the shrewd, vicious farmer who set it. But his, his confrontation with the subtle evils that underlie the life of his small Appalachian community has begun. Before long, Travis has moved out of his parents' home to live with Leonard Schuler, a one-time school teacher who now deals a little pot to make ends meet. Travis becomes his student of sorts, and the fate of those two outsiders becomes increasingly entwined as the community's violent past and corrupt present bears down on each of them from every direction. So I got this in the mail today, another novel by Ron Rash, The World Made Straight. As I mentioned, I got this one last week uh, at a used books, at a thrift store. Another novel by Ron Rash, Above the Waterfall. No, I got this at the library used bookstore uh, two weeks ago. And uh, I went to thrift stores the other day with my wife and I were out doing errands. And when we're out doing errands, we always stop at thrift stores so I can look at the used books. And I found this novel by Ron Rash called The Cove, a novel. I plan to buy all of his novels, like I said. Uh, so now I have four novels by Ron Rash. <coughs> I don't know how many he's written. He's written, uh, he's written some poetry and short stories also. Uh, it's interesting that both these books, Serena was made into a Nash, a movie, and so was this book, The World Made Straight, was made into a movie. You can see the trailers of these two novels that were made into movies in YouTube, which I looked at today. So, yeah. I was looking at this afternoon and reading about the Appalachian and about how people in the Appalachian, uh, I was reminded of this cookbook, White Trash Cooking by Ernest Matthew Mickler. You know, they have photos in here of people living in the Appalachians, living in, you know, I like the photographs in this. Photographs. I was reminded of this book when I was reading about the Appalachian and about the people who lived in these mountains back in the beginning of the Depression. So yeah, I mentioned I went to thrift stores the other day, with, and I found this novel by D.H. Lawrence, Lost Girl. I found this novel called The Book of Revelations by Rubart Thomason. And I found this novel, which is 
in the uh, New Art Review books, The Horse's Mouth by Joyce Carey. This is the third volume of a trilogy that Joyce Carey wrote. Uh, I put those in my Amazon box to buy in the future, the first and second volume of this trilogy. And I found a novel by Louis Archiklas, The Honorable Ben. I collect his novels and his, uh, his writings. This is his novel, The Honorable Men. Uh, I found another novel about, this is short stories by Gail Godwin. Godwin. I collect her writings. These are her short stories. Mr. Bedford and the Muses. She is famous for her novel, The Martha, excuse me, the, A Mother and Two Daughters. Uh, so I found that. And I found a novel by Jacqueline Susan. I've mentioned in the past, they just republished uh, her famous novel back in the late 60s or 70s, The Valley of the Dolls, the 50th anniversary. This is one of her novels, Once is Not Enough by Jacqueline Susan. See, that's kind of a picture of her. This was first published in 1973. Uh, I also have her novel, The Love Machine, The Valley of the Dolls, which is, as I mentioned in the past, when I was a young teenager and my, I was either 13 or 14, my mother had laying around our little duplex Jacqueline Susan's novel The Valley of the Dolls and I read it and my mother took me to see the movie with one of her boyfriends when I was in my early teens. I just got this because I have The Love Machine and The Valley of Dolls and so why not? I only got it for 50 cents. Once is not enough. It says, Jacqueline Susan follows her incredible success, Valley of the Dolls and the Love Machine, with a story so touching and so exciting in its twist of character and relationships that it will not only captivate her millions of devoted readers, but will win her many new admirers. The novel's theme, daring, potent, sensitively rendered, is a mental incest. January Wayne, named by an adoring father after the month in 1950 when she was born, is in love with her father. He is Mike Wayne, a renowned movie and theater producer, a lover of many women, and above all, a gambler. January's mother died when she was seven, and Mike was forced to place his daughter in a boarding school. But his weekends belonged to her, and on these weekends, she saw Mike, the father, the producer, the gambler, and the most exciting man in the world. She grew up with, with only one thought, one desire, to enter his world and take her place at his side. She is 20 when she enters that world, but she finds it is a different world than the one she saw on those limousine weekends. She learns it, it is a world in which she must search desperately for herself and for fulfillment of her love. It is a world whose many strange and not always pleasant standards are set by people like Derry Milford Ganger, one of the richest women alive, David Milford, Dandery's handsome young cousin, who seems a natural match for January. Carla, a world famous motion picture star, whose corrupt, excuse me, whose abrupt retirement and present her harmonic life have made her legendary. Linda Riggs, still in her 20s, editor-in-chief of an up-and-coming women's magazine whose private life is not at all in keeping with the stature of her well-earned public position. And Tom Colt, a middle-aged best-selling novelist who is very tough with his fist and can be very tender with his words. So yeah, this came out in the early 70s. I also found a, a novel by the 17th, well, 18th century British writer, Daniel Defoe, who wrote, I think he wrote Robinson Crusoe. 
This is novel Roxana. And I found this biography of Chanel, Chanel Perfume. This is, she was a Paris icon in the 20s and 30s. This is her biography, Chanel, A Woman of Her Own by Axel Madison. And I also found uh, this novel, Einstein's Dreams by Alan Lightman. I mentioned I found this novel recently by Lightman, The Diagnosis. And I found this novel by someone I never heard of, uh, Brad Lighthouser, The Friends of Freeland. Uh, this is a novel by Joseph Heller, who wrote the famous novel Catch-22. I collect his writings. This is his novel, Portrait of an Artist as an Old Man. This is a picture of Joseph Heller. And this is a novel by Peter Matheson, who I also collect. This is his novel, In Paradise. And I had to cover for somebody at the library used bookstore yesterday. And for my free book for volunteering, I brought home this biography of Al, uh, Anne Rand and the World She Made by Anne C. Heller. I have an Anne Rand collection. I have not read her any biographies by her or any of her books, but I collect her writings, biographies, studies on her philosophy. Because when I was in high school, her, uh, her novels were read by the people around me, like The Fountainhead and Alice, Atlas Shrugged. Everybody was reading those when I was in, back in the late 60s and 70s. So I got that as my free book. So those are the books I got for our library at used bookstores. Those are the books I got in the mail. Uh, like I said, I'm reading primarily uh, Serena by Ron Rash. I will do, uh, I want to do share my thoughts and reflections on this novel and reviews, I mean, in videos coming up in the future. So now I got three, four of his novels. So, and I'll probably order more from Amazon or look for them at thrift stores where use book sales. And uh, I'll look at this new book I got in the mail, Hermeneutics as Apprenticeship. So that's what's going on in my book world. Today is a win tonight's a Wednesday. I'm hoping you're having a good reading week and that you'll have a good a good rest of the week and until next time, bye.